Check in with our, our buddy, Professor Richard Wolf. He is the economist, co-founder of democracyatwork.info, the author of numerous books, his most recent, The Sickness is the System, When Capitalism Fails to Save Us from Pandemics or Itself, also available as an e-book. He is the, the host of Economic Update with Richard Wolf, uh, right here on Free Speech TV, uh, you can find it. Uh, democracywork.info, rdwolf.com, uh, with two Fs are his websites, and uh, Prof Wolf, P-R-O-F-W-O-L-F-F -F -F is his Twitter handle. And uh, Professor Wolf, I, I, I wanted to talk to you about unions and, and why they're important in their history, but before we get to that, I had a caller uh, in the last hour who had a question, and you know, I hope you don't mind my springing something on you at the last minute here, but you're, you're so well informed. I'm, I'm confident that you will have at least a, a thought on this um, or can verify its accuracy. He, he said that what he had read is that um, uh, several decades ago, about 90% of the transactions happening around the world were denominated in dollars. And now it's down to about 60%, that the, the U.S. dollar as the reserve currency for the world is slipping. I'm wondering if, A, you can validate or verify that statistic, and B, if so, what does that mean to us? Well, here's what I can do. I'm not up on the latest you know, particular numbers, but there is no question that the reserve role of the U.S. currency uh, is shrinking in the world. It has been for some time uh, at a kind of slow rate. It, it sped up a little bit about 20 years ago when uh, the Chinese began to become the, the economic uh, powerhouse that they now are. But what really sped it up were the last few years, um, including uh, and especially the sanctions response to the uh, Russian invasion of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. uh, at that point, a kind of decision was made around the world that the United States dollar simply was no longer the stable, quiet, rock solid way for a country to show that its currency was valuable. Basically what all countries around the world did was to hold in New York City at the Federal Reserve Bank a deposit of dollars. And that was there to show the world that if you ever had a question about the currency, whether it was the British pound or the, the Italian lira or any other, um, that country could show you, you could cash it in if you had to. We have the dollars in our wealth uh, held in New York, but nonetheless owned by these various countries to back up our currency. And that's what made their currencies convertible. It allowed an American business, for example, to do business with a counterpart in Asia, Africa, or Europe, and not worry, you could hold their currency for a few days or weeks and then convert it because it was all backed by the U.S. dollar. It really was the other side of the dominance of the United States of the world economy, at least since the Second World War. And there was a problem with that. Mm -hmm. here's, here's where things get dicey. First, there's an enormous benefit to the United States of doing this. And the simplest way to explain it is as follows. A foreign country sends... Uh, something valuable to us. A French people send us wine or German people send us a uh, high tech machinery. We would normally, if the world were a world of equals, we would have to pay for whatever of value was sent to us with something equivalent, something that we had produced, something that incorporated the, the labor that we uh, put into a good. But if you're the world's a currency, you don't have to do that. You just have to send them little green pieces of paper, currency that we produce here that doesn't cost virtually anything. It's literally just paper, but they hold the paper because it's their reserve. It's their proof that their currency is valuable. So the United States for 50 years now has been able to get the world to produce goods and services, send them to us, and all we give them is literally little green pieces of paper, which have now simply become electronic record keeping, 
And that's a one-way flow of value that benefits the United States and costs every other country in the world. So you might have imagined if they didn't get the benefit of having their currency backed up by the dollar, they would never have wanted that. Mm. Now enter the new fact. The United States is losing its international position. Our empire simply is not what it was 20, 40, 60 years ago. And the United States is busy punishing countries, Venezuela, Iran, uh, and others. And one of the ways it punishes, as it did, by the way, with Russia in this current uh, war in Ukraine, is to seize those reserves, to freeze them, to make them not available to the countries that literally own them. And that, of course, raises deep questions in the minds of every other country. Is our reserve in New York safe? Or could there be a government in the United States, either the present one or the next one voted in, that could begin to play with our assets. So now the dollar is not anymore the universal wonderful equivalent. Meanwhile, the Europeans get together and have one currency, the euro, and the Chinese are rising as a powerhouse. So now people around the world, banks, central banks, countries, have options. They don't have to only hold the dollar. If you hold the euro or you hold uh, the Chinese yuan and so on, you can begin to get almost the same effect so that the world is making less use of the dollar. And then comes the war in Ukraine. That has split the world. I know in Western media here in the United States, there's lots of hoopla about how it's an international, everybody condemns Russia. That's fantasy, that's not correct. China doesn't condemn Russia, India doesn't condemn Russia, and even before I go through the many other countries that don't, let me remind everyone that India and China together are the two biggest countries on this planet. They are trading with Russia, working out all kinds of deals, and one of the deals they're working out is to use the dollar less and less the way they used to, to try to convert the whole world to become more aligned with them by using their currencies together with, instead of exceptionally only relative to the dollar. So yeah, your questioner was right. The role of the dollar shrinking in the world in parallel with the shrinking position of the United States economically and in all other measures of global activity. And that's something Americans have not yet faced, can't, can't wrap their heads around it, don't want to see it, all of which I understand. Mm -hmm. But it is making you unaware of how the world is changing. And that's a recipe for very bad political and particularly foreign decisions.